Shalom YouTube, Sister Kate here. I'm out of my four-wheeler getting ready to get some more water before the snow tomorrow and there that looks a little better. Um, I wanted to do a quick video on a, the flu, like the flu an update because I've noticed like on Yahoo News and things um, and even CNN that people are starting to report flu deaths and if you've watched any of the videos I've done on the flu, I've already let you know that the flu kind of tends to flare up in the fall and then in the spring. Um, and in the great flu epidemic, it was there in the fall and not too many deaths. And then it roared back in the spring and it just started slaughtering everybody over the course of a couple of years. That was the pattern. So I just did a little bit of research online and I've got it here because I can't remember it all. So I'm going to just quote some things to you but if you go to the CDC they have a website there's multiple hospital websites and flu reporting websites so it's easy to get more information if you're interested in it the um, flus that are rotating around they said they're co-circulating are type A and type B one of them is the H1N1 the other one is the H3N2 and about 75% of the flus being reported right now are the type A but the type B, which is supposed to be not as virulent, has, uh, is harder for little kids to survive. And so some of the reported deaths from the flu have been children who had type B. Uh, all the flus right now still show a sensitivity to three uh, antiviral meds. They are Ocelt, Mirvir, Xana, Mirvir, and Paramivir. I don't recognize any of them. Um, the one that we're, we've got um, put up is um, Sambuca based, the, you know, the uh, black elderberry, very dry. We made a um, vodka and elderberry mix tincture that is supposed to be to fight the flu. So that's what we've got. And they don't, they don't mention that on here. Um, now I got, more than one CDC report, so it was the different time frames. Right now, 40 states are reporting sporadic cases. One state is um, reporting widespread flu, and then the other places are just kind of the occasional. And in general, the CDC said that the amount of flu being reported, a baseline normal rate, is it's pretty small it's like 2.2 percent um it's pretty low right now but it's increasing so that's sort of significant but it's it's a small percentage of people um the latest stats that i could find were two children in oregon oh no that was in january sorry five pediatric deaths in mississippi have been reported for december so that's now back in january there were two children in Oregon, uh, a 51-year-old woman in Massachusetts, a 21-year-old man, um, and at least a couple of those deaths, the person had the flu, but then they developed a bacterial infection, an ongoing bacterial infection. The one, the 21-year-old had septic shock, which means your whole body is under attack by a bacteria, and the lady developed a severe pneumonia, which is you know, right in your lungs. And that's often how the flu um, actually kills people quickly is that their body starts flooding areas of their body with the antibodies, which causes a fluid buildup. It causes like blood serum to build up. And if it's in your lungs, then the, the pneumonia can take advantage of the fact that you've got a warm, moist area and get in there. And then it's hard for your body to fight that as well. Uh, in November in 2018, there were five deaths reported in North Carolina. And in October, there was one baby um, reported died in Florida. So why am I telling you this? Because flu is a virus. It's not a bacteria. It cannot be treated by antibiotics. The antibiotics treat the, the bacteria that come and attack you after you have the flu, but it's a virus. And so normally you are treating the symptoms of a cold, 
you know, and with flu, you get the runny nose, you get coughing, sore throat. Sometimes it's also intestinal because all the nasal drip goes to your stomach and then you're throwing up and you have diarrhea, you get dehydrated. Um, and it's a lot harder for your body when it's under the viral symptoms to then fight off bacteria that come and uh, get in there. So there were 80,000 flu deaths in the United States last year. That was supposed to be, you know, not a big deal. Um, it's a big deal to the people who suffered that, but it was not a big deal for the country. But I found sort of an interesting statistic. This was for Wales and England last winter. 50,000 people got a flu vaccine that was ineffective against whatever uh, flu strain was going around the United Kingdom. And they said 50,000 extra or um, unnecessary deaths occur from that particular ineffective flu vaccine. Interesting. So two thirds of the number of people who died in America from flu last year died in England, which has a much smaller population, from ineffective flu vaccines. Hmm. I'm kind of on the fence about the flu vaccine. I understand why people are trying to get um, people vaccinated for the flu because you, with a virus, if you've had a flu or the flu, your body builds up the antibodies for it. The problem with the flu is it changes with each person who gets in contact with each person's DNA that it's interacting with when you have the flu it changes the actual flu itself and so that's why that strain was ineffective they're guessing for a particular year what vaccine might work because it's constantly changing and that's why the flu can become pandemic if it changes enough, then people's bodies don't have a way to fight it off. And it just, it overwhelms your, your system. So what is one way to survive the flu? And it's pretty much 100% guaranteed. Quarantine. The people who survived the 1917 Spanish flu that killed 50 million people worldwide, shut down the gates of their towns and would not let anybody in or out. They were quarantined until the flu spent itself in their area and moved on. And then they came back out and interacted with people once the flu had come through. That is 100% effective. So if you want to know what you should do in a flu situation, you can go get the vaccine if you want. I'm not going to I'm not going to get into the vaccine and whether I think they work or not. That's a personal decision for you. My number one recommendation is if the flu, because it will show up um, as local activity, the hospitals and the clinics and everything will report it and, and you can know if it's in your local area. Don't go out, don't interact in public places, don't go to McDonald's or the library or the grocery store while the flu is local to your area. Just avoid it. You should have enough food stores that you don't need to go into town and you can do that for at least a few weeks. That is my number one recommendation for you. That is my plan. And sort of a just a personal thing with me is I've had the flu a couple of times. I've had the Asian flu. It was horrible. Um, and I've probably had at least one other flu since then, so I should have some resistance to it, but I'm not gonna test it. I'm not gonna go get the flu to then hope I have antibodies for a flu coming. My flu resistance would just be because I managed to catch it um, in my lifetime. I've been a lot, long time. So my number one recommendation to you is just stay away from it. Stay away from any uh, infectious, highly serious disease, not just flu, Ebola, you know, hepatitis, just quarantine yourself. That is the smartest way. That is the most survivable way. And keep your eye on the flu because we've got some flu that's happening in the fall, but the springtime is when the big stuff really starts to flare up. Just, I'm not saying be afraid. I'm not a fear porn person. I'm saying be watchful.
being a watchman is smart. All right, I hope this has helped you all. Bless you. Shalom.